Hey guys, it's JH. Welcome to practice tea again. Okay, four. Four, uh, and we've got this new descriptive of people who are who are doing channel lock. We call them lockers. For all you lockers out there, just something, again, a variation, an option. That you can have with uh, channel lock. I was watching uh, uh, Billy Phillips on MMI Golf this morning and he's added a variation and an option to his swing in that he is letting his trail side become quite um, mobile and travel like after he's hit the ball. He's not trying to keep the the weight in that vertical trail axis um, and he, and he looked like he was hitting it great. So, you don't have to set any of this in cement, guys. It's, it's the basic tenant and the premise of, of channel lock that I think you only have to apply. And that is back ball position and hitting the ball in a channel from beside your body, which constitutes an into-out attack on the golf ball with closed shoulders. How you do that? And how you get the ball to go to your target consistently with that that uh, that part of the um, of the channel lock protocol, which is the foundational part of it, that's up to you. I mean, how, how you whatever else you apply over and above that, if you if you get the right type of result, if you have to change your alignment factors, but you can hit it from the side of you with the back ball position, and you can get a consistent into out attack on the ball, and the ball always tracks you know slightly to the right of the target line all the time if you can do that it doesn't matter what you apply and Bill Phillips has, has proved that Billy's really loosened up his up his um, his action and, and what I saw him doing this morning was that he was here and then when he hit it it hit the ball it was yeah now that's just releasing the pressure in the trail axis um, after the shot. Now if you lack a little bit of flexibility, that would probably be a good thing. I mean I'm not flexible, but I'm strong. I'm physically strong in, in, in my core and my legs and um, that I can actually hold the pressure in that trail axis after I've hit the ball. So for me it's beneficial. But, but if you don't have the same physicality of me, then it wouldn't be beneficial. And I agree with Bill that, uh, that you should explore a little bit of mobility post-impact. So you don't have to apply the total original suggested uh, channel lock protocol that I, I suggested. Um, I've changed it a little bit. I mean, I've, I've got to the stage where you know, I used to take it back here and then just cock the club up. Well, now I don't think I want to cock the club at all. So, so that's a... Um, um, that's a change and a variation and an option that I've applied. And for lockers... Um, I'm going to give you a license to do whatever you want. At the end of the day, guys, it doesn't matter what JH says. If you can apply the basic tenant of channel lock and you can apply it with the basic structural tenant in place in the basic format and you can have a variation attached to it and you hit it great, then that's okay. And you should tell me about it. You should tell me the variations you're applying because they could be beneficial to other people. And to me, I mean, I'm always open to change. I mean, if I can, I mean, if, what, what, what Bill was doing, this is what Bill was doing, what Bill Phillips was doing. He was just letting this trail foot come up a little bit. Now, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm going to hit that ball, ball perfectly, absolutely perfectly. Nothing wrong with it. What did I feel the difference between that and my 
and my normal channel lock more freedom in it I feel I'm, I'm deliberately staying in that trail axis when I hit it because I find that I can actually deliver more energy towards the ball and down and out when I stay here I felt a little bit of personal dissipation of energy with that that uh, little bit of mobility there but there's nothing wrong with that I mean Bill was just nutting it this morning and he'd had a few days off and he came back and just hit it perfectly and I think that's what we've got to do we have to make sure that we've got options that work for us and, and it's basically to use to use Bill Phillips's uh, overlaying terminology this this is probably a find you option that you can apply to uh, to channel lock there's nothing wrong with applying a little bit more mobility nothing at all <clears throat> see I got the got the got the trial foot up there trial foot comes up nothing wrong with that you know why that came up because I was thinking about it nothing wrong with it absolutely nothing wrong with doing that so that so there's just options guys that we can apply and then maybe uh, maybe it just makes learning channel lock easier for the majority because we're all built differently we all feel the club differently see there's a bit of mobility there look nothing wrong with that absolutely nothing wrong with that what do I think of that feels nice would it be detrimental would I, would I use that as opposed to the trail foot down and directing that energy down I wouldn't because I have the strength um, body components to, to stay in that trail that trail axis and apply apply some I think I can apply a little bit more hurt to the ball than that um, I feel that there's probably for me probably 15 20 percent dissipation of energy by having a bit of mobility but it won't affect most people and certainly it didn't affect Bill I actually thought that Bill was getting more uh, more speed in his golf swing by doing that see there it is guys that's up a little bit but what's interesting is if, if you get that trail foot up don't fire it up this way you can get it up but let it come this way let it let the heel come in behind the toe because what that does if you fire it up and you fire it you fire that heel out it'll take this this entire trail side you know of the body including the shoulder out but if you lift it and this comes here you've still got this trail side captive if it comes here if you watch Hogan Hogan's heel came up but it went this way it never went this way so there was no rollout if you can if you can lift it and keep your heel in there nothing wrong with that and, and who's to say that I won't evolve to that going forward because it feels nice there's certainly nothing wrong with it, it feels great well I'll, I'll just I'll just revert back to, to, to my to my version of, of channel lock yeah I got a lot more <laughs> yeah, for me there's a lot more hit on it but but guys the reason there's more hit on it is that I can simply apply my strength factor my personal strength factor more efficiently that way when I've got this anchor in this trail foot I mean that had a lot more a lot more hurt on it than than releasing the trail foot but that's only because I'm I'm, I'm I can use this 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 core strength that I've got and this this leg and this upper body thigh strength that I've got and this whole you know, trail side of the body component I mean, that, I mean that really had some on it but you don't have to you know you don't have to do that see that's up a little bit 
Well, you know, I might end up with a hybrid. I might end up with a uh, a, uh, a part of Billy Phillips' uh, uh, release lock. He's just releasing the lock a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. I like that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'll try and keep it down in my pure protocol. It's come up a little bit. Nothing wrong with it. It's coming up a little bit because I've got a got that program in my brain okay now I'll go back to my protocol and I'll count my protocol down and, and part of my protocol countdown sequencing is is just before I take it back as I feel is maybe a five as a five part of the sequence or maybe even a six that I think yeah that, that I just feel that pressure down there so I'll go through it and go through the protocol and the foot will stay down Yeah, they're good shots. What's uh, what's been really good, guys, is the is the implementation of the straight line and no wrist cock. Getting lots of heat on the ball with the driver, just absolutely uh, hammer time with the uh, with the driver. with the straight line because I've got no risk cock. It feels like for anybody out there who is au fait with you know terminology that they use you know on the on the tour in terms of shot types I feel like even with the driver I'm arm balling it. And what is an arm ball? Arm ball is this guys that the club and the arms move the same. There's no real um, disconnection of the feeling of the head of the club from the arms by no wrist cock. We still get it, but we don't feel it. The same as if we'd hit a little, if we were going to hit a, um, say we were going to hit a little shot, there's a flag out here at about 55. If I was going to hit a little pitch shot out here to a flag out here, I'd arm ball it. I'd just do that. I mean, the club would go back. With no thought of of cocking my wrists at all, it's just an arm ball. As, as you would just take the club back if you were doing that. That is that is simply an arm ball. Yeah, it's gone in. <laughs> the uh, it's amazing that that ball went up and it just went bang, 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 uh, grab, and then just went across and just fell in the hole but but with the driver I feel that the driver is just an elongated version of an arm ball with channel lock I don't feel any I don't feel any intervention of the hands uh, or the wrists wanting to cock the club they do but I don't feel that they do so watch this change the angle a bit this is just a straight line pushback. Now that's really on the right axis. And that's what I try and do with the driver because the driver has so much pull forward because of inertia that I try and keep that right foot down. And I hit the ball beautifully with the driver because of that. And I hit the ball higher with the driver because I'm staying back. Remember guys, if you're using the driver and you're playing the ball back, you've got to loft up. I've got this up at 11 degrees. Um, now it's 11.5. I've got a one up. It's a 10.5 head, and I've got it up one. Okay, so watch this. This is an arm ball. I'm not trying to cock my wrists at all. I'm just straight lining it. Very much like the other day when I was. My arms are separated from my body. I'm just going to take it back as if it's a long, a long pitch shot. Guys, I wish you could see that. Wow. It feels like a long pitch shot. Just feels like this. That's what it feels like. None of this. I'm not setting anything. Just taking the club there as deep as it'll go. 
and then it'll just come up. I had a buddy of mine up here from uh, Sydney last week and he was having fits with his golf swing because he was cocking the club off the ball and he was way up here and I got him I took him out onto the green here and just got him to hit a couple of little arm ball pitch shots. I came back and I said, all I want you to hear is a conventional golf swing. I said, all I want you to do is take that structure of arm balling those pitch shots into the driver. I just feel like it's a long, it's a long arm ball pitch shot. Okay, this is channel lock. He wasn't doing channel lock. But for us, now that, we, now that we've got straight line, Guys, that's, I've got to tell you, that has made a marked improvement in the, uh, the channel lock contact since I've gone to, to the arm balling, or, or the no wrist cock, no deliberate wrist cock. And I've only hit a couple of shots, so I'll just try and take this one back a bit further, but it, all this will be, guys, is a longer arm ball. No deliberate intention to cock the wrist. It's very much Mo Norman-ish, but with channel lock position. Oh. That's just perfect. Just perfect. And what it does, guys, is it just gives you the feeling of the golf club head. When you, when you fire that away, you can really feel the head. When I see guys cock the club early off the and I used to do it myself. My old golf swing used to be like that. When I see them cock, I reckon you lose the feeling of the head. Because it starts coming this way. But when it's moving this way... Alright, I'll really try and... I warmed up after six shots. And it's warm here today, it's so hot. Okay. Armball at JH. That's the best drive I've hit since I've been on Channel I got. That's it, that's the best drive. And the amazing thing is there's absolutely no thought process of what am I doing with wrist cock and when do I cock and all that sort of thing. There's none of that guys, it's just this. If I could I push the club along the ground like that. I push it there. If I never had to elevate the golf club in my backswing in any manner or form, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. All right, see if we can do a, we can exceed that best shot, best drive since I've been on Channel Life. Look at this. Now this is the biggest arm ball you've ever seen. Well there guys, that's the best drive I've hit since I've been on Channel Line. The best. And they don't move at all, they're just dead straight. But the good thing about arm balling is you can take it to every facet of your game. The driver. Uh, okay, you may have to work a little bit. Uh, if, you, if you want to pinch a three wood off the fairway, because uh, you need a little bit of you know, little cock so you can actually pinch a driver off the fairway, but, but hit a few shots of a driver, three wood or a five wood. But I hit some shots here the other day with pure arm balls with three woods and they were pure. I mean, I could hit them off a concrete road because it's so shallow into the ball. There's no pinch on it. It's just absolute, um, you get plenty of pinch with a little pitch shot, but with the three wood, it's just a, a sweep away. That, that shot was just, that drive was quite extraordinary. Quite extraordinary. Can I see if I can really pump this one? Well now guys, there's three PBs in a row that have exceeded each other in a row. Okay, so, that, so this video was basically to talk more about options and if you want a bit of mobility like Billy Phillips, then go for it. 
Yeah. There's, there's nothing that Billy advocates that I don't, I don't support because all the stuff that he advocates is supported. It's supported by, by uh, applicational logic. I mean, he, don't, he wouldn't do it if there was no point in doing it. And he's working it into his own golf swing. And he's practicing over there in <laughs> ridiculously cold temperatures. I've, I've never done that. I wouldn't even practice if it was cold like here. I couldn't go out and swing. My stiff body wouldn't swing. I mean, even in the wintertime here, it's, it's not cold ever. And that's why you never see JH in long pants. Because even wintertime, it never gets cold enough. You don't need... Um, the sun's the killer here. And that's why I've got these new sleeves on that protect my arms that... that uh, my uh, channel friend Bob in the US uh, sent me out. They're great. They're fantastic guys. They, and one day when the breeze comes on, cools your arm. It's amazing. Because, you know, standing out in the sun for as many years as I have, I've got lots of small skin cancers I have to get burnt off every six months or so. So, so these are an absolute uh, godsend. Okay, come on, Joe. Hit another one of those. I mean, that was just a fantastic shot. Wow, he did good. See if he can do a PB. Every one of those was better than the last. And there it is. I think that's the same as the last one. Okay, guys, just a couple of uh, videos today. One on the setup of the protocol and this one on options. I've got a couple of other things and uh, that, I'll, that I'll do during the week because the weather looks like being good all this week. Okay guys, have a look at that and give me some feedback comments.